So let's stand and sing our invocation. Lord, you have called us and equipped us to serve you. You have called us and equipped us to bear good fruit. You have called us and equipped us to share your blessings. We come to worship and bless your name. So let's stand and sing all things bright and beautiful. Well, Zachary, are you coming down here? Yeah. Now, oh, I think I'll have a wee seat. Now, let's see. Where have you gone? Now, I've spread that on the ground because I thought we'd, we'd get a big row from Barbara if we make a mess. So, I wonder, do you know how, where you get potatoes from? Your mummy, where do you get potatoes from? At the shops. Do you get them at the shops? I think you get them at the shops. But do you know, I've got some potatoes here. It's a potato, yes. It's a little potato. And you know, 
Sometimes you grow things from seed, but from a potato you don't grow it from seed, you grow it from what they call, this is going to be confusing now, because they say a seed potato, and it sprouts little things and you plant it, but you don't know whether you're going to get big potatoes or little potatoes. So I wonder, we could dig in here, and do you think we'll find little potatoes or big potatoes? Oh, what's that? That's a, a big potato. It's a big potato. It is a big potato. We'll put it down here so that I don't make a mess. Because I don't want a row for Barbara. Well, do you think there's any more? Well, we have a... Oh, where? Well, I dig here. Oh, there's one. Is that a little one? That's a little one. What about something else? Let's see. Oh, oh there's another one. Oh, oh, do you think that's a big one? Yeah. That's a big potato. Oh, do you think there's any more in here? Yeah. It's not very good soil for potatoes, is it? Oh, oh, there's one. Oh, look. Oh, there's one, a big one. And oh, a little one. So, they're all different, aren't they? Oh, we've even got some more. I've got enough to make my dinner. Is there any more? Oh, I think that might be them all. Oh, we didn't make too much mess, did we? We won't tell Barbara. She'll never be, she'll never know. And we'll wrap them all up in here. And I thought, since it's harvest, and we think of different places in the world, this old cloth has travelled very, very far, and it's very, very old, because I had this when I worked in Malawi. I did, and I used to wear it. <laughs> I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't wear it now, but I used to wrap that round myself in Malawi many, many, many years ago. So, if I can get up off my knees, there we go, whoops. And don't wreck the microphone. Let's see. Oh, and papers are flying. This is just not my day, is it? There we are. So, with potatoes, I'm going to sit here. Right. Are you sitting with me? You sit with me, Zachary. So, with potatoes, you wait till the shoots come up because they were only little. But once they get green leaves, then you think, oh, the potatoes are growing but you don't know what's happening under the ground. And under the ground, they may be big potatoes, or they may be little potatoes. And until you dig them up, you don't know whether you've got a good crop or a bad crop. And it's quite exciting to see what you're going to dig up. So, we've dug up our potatoes. And in our Bible story today, we're actually going to talk about wheat, but we could compare our lives to potatoes because sometimes things look good on the outside like the potatoes with all these big leaves but when you dig them up there's actually no potatoes but underneath they're not so fruitful sometimes our lives look plain and ordinary from the outside but inside in our own quiet way we're doing lots of good things but we it's only us and god that knows what's going on inside us so but it's good to know that there's lots of good things going on inside everybody. And quite often we don't know about it. But do you know what we're going to do now? We're going to sing. And we're going to sing, and I've taken this, I've pinched this from the school, the Harvest Samba. Now, there's one part of it, uh, uh, maybe two-thirds of the way through where, there's two parts, so I will stand up for this. So... On the screen, you will see two sets of what, different words. So I thought, if the people on the left sing the left-hand side of the words when that bit comes up, and people on the right sing the right-hand side, and we'll see what it sounds like. But let's sing. Will we sing? Yeah, come on then. Let's sing.
hard when you've got different words, isn't it? <laughs> there we are. Thank you, Zachary, for being with me for that and helping me with digging up potatoes. So I think what we'll do now is let's draw near to God in prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for all the gifts you have given us, for our life and the world in which we live. Father, we give you thanks and praise for the work we are able to do, for the truth we are permitted to learn, for the good that has been in our lives. Father, we give you thanks and praise for the order and const constancy of nature, for the beauty and bounty of the world, for day and night, summer and winter, seed time and harvest. Father, we give you thanks for the boundless store of harvest, for the fruits of the earth to sustain and gladden life. Father, we give you thanks and praise for the industry and perseverance of those who work on our farms, for those who shape the farmers' tools and build machines, for those who by their skill and labour have helped to supply our food. Father, we give you thanks and praise for the comforts of life, for our homes and their joys, for our town and its community life. Father, we give you thanks and praise. Father of all, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, for his life and his death, for his resurrection and ascension, for his redemption of all creation, for the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we give you thanks and praise. Our Father in heaven, you are awesome. Show us who you are and how you want us to be. Make earth more like heaven. Please give us what we need to keep going each day. Help us when we are wrong and clean us up on the inside. Help us to let other people off and move on. Keep us from bad stuff. You're in charge. You're strong and powerful and always there forever. Amen. And so we come to our harvest reading, which is from Matthew chapter 13, 1 to 9, and then 18 to 23. And Joyce will read it for us. The parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the leek. Such large crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop. A hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. Verse 18. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is a man who hears the word but worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it 
he produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Amen. May God add his blessing, blessing to his holy word. Thank you, Joyce, for that reading of God's holy word. So we're going to sing again another good harvest hymn. We plough the fields and scatter. CH4229. well. So we have heard about the parable of the sower in words, but let's see it visually and see if it maybe has, means more. Sometimes people are good visually rather than just reading and some people read words better than visual. So we've got a little parable of the sower video. One day, a farmer went out to sow some seeds. As he walked along, he threw the seeds wherever he went. Each seed was the same, bright and green and full of the potential for life. Some of the seeds fell on stony ground there was nowhere for their roots to grow. They just sat there. Birds spotted the seeds from the air. They flew down and ate them up. Some seeds fell on rocky places where there wasn't much soil. They quickly grew at first, but the soil was shallow. 
and when the sun came up, they withered and died, because they had no root. Some other seeds fell among thorns. The seeds started to grow, but the thorns grew bigger, and they choked the new plants, so they didn't produce any crop. They just disappeared. But other seeds fell on good soil. They grew and grew, strong and bright, and the life in the seeds bore an amazing crop, some with 30 grains, some 60, and some even 100 grains of corn. So, I think the, the weeds were a bit fierce. I think I'd have withered and died with them as well. So, but, but, so what we're showing there is that the seeds found it difficult to judge whether they were on good soil or, or whether there was going to be weeds that would choke them out or whether they had gone onto the stony ground. So they found it difficult to judge between good and bad. And therefore... When we're like that, we have to be able to exist alongside one another. We have to be patient. We have to trust in God that he will separate the good from the bad when the time is right. And he will do so as he decides, which may not be the same as we would do it. We think about superheroes in comic book stories. And sometimes they can have a darker side to their personality as well, whereas we think of them as being goodies. But if we look closely, there's a fine line between being a goodie and a baddie. All have shown their bad side at some point, and boundaries between good and bad can get blurred. Rather like the story of the weeds and the wheat in today's Bible reading. Life is never simple and can feel all mixed up. We all have both wheat and weeds within us. We are all in the field, we're, or, or together, we're all in life together. And that's how it must be, Jesus says. But that should not stop us working for what is good and right. God gives us time to make the right decisions and to correct any wrong ones. That is what God is waiting for. So we can decide whether we want to be the wheat and grow up to be nice sheaves of corn, or are we the weeds that kind of stunt other people's growth and we maybe demoralize people sometimes by what we say, what we do, and we're maybe not as kind as we could be. So are we wheat or weeds? And I think we would all like to be wheat and do the right thing, be, be in good soil and grow and reach our full potential and help other people to do the same. And as Christians, that's what Jesus is looking for us, to serve our community. And at this harvest time, we see just how much the good is in the people here in this congregation, sharing what they have, the good that's in our schools when the pupils come and share, what their parents have given them, all our organisations. So we really are very lucky in the place where we find ourselves. And it's continuing to build these relationships, strengthen our relationships with our community and share the gifts that we've got through this harvest, which we will do later when we divide it up. And I thought today we would just have some offering of symbolic gifts for our harvest. 
and I've given out people. I did a thing that I hated being done to me when I was sitting in a congregation. On a Sunday, somebody comes, the minister comes up and says, will you just do that? And will you just read that? And you go, yeah, well, <laughs> but you really don't want to. And I did that today, which is a thing I really probably shouldn't do. But thank you to all the people who have accepted what I've offered them. And um, I just thought we would have symbolic gifts of our harvest. So I will ask people to come up. And first one is Lynn with the offering of soya. We bring the soil of our fields and gardens as a symbol of all that God has created. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. Offering of fruits of the earth. We bring the harvest of our fields and of our gardens as symbols of our work in partnership with God. We know we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We bring the seeds for next year's planting as a symbol of God's promise to provide for our daily bread. They sow fields and plant vineyards which give them fruitful harvest. God blesses them and they multiply greatly. Offering of water. We bring water as a symbol of our dependence on God for life and of the new life God gives in baptism. God will, sprinkle, sorry, God will sprinkle clear water over you. We shall be made clean from all that defiles us. And our last offering is of bread and wine. We bring bread and wine as symbols of our use of God's gift and of his spiritual food, the sacrament of his body and blood. Everything in heaven and earth is yours. We bring these offerings as a symbol of our grateful thanks for all that you have done for us and continue to do for us. So let's join together and stand and sing from CH4, two, three, two, pears and apples, wheat and grapes.
let's join together with our prayers for the world. Lord, take what we have to offer, our money, our time, our talents, and no matter how small we might feel these gifts to be, may they become part of the overall goodness of humanity's offering. Increase our faith, Lord. Increase our trust, Lord. Increase our belief, Lord. Loving God, let there be harvest in your world. We pray for those places in the world where the crops have failed and for those where poverty is the result of human aggression and human greed. We pray for a harvest of peace and plenty and we promise to work with you for it, both reaping and sowing. Let there be harvest in the hearts of all people. We pray for those who are spiritually starved, who long for meaning in their lives and who need to belong. Give to your church patience and energy, boldness to speak out and the ability to listen. We pray for a harvest of faith and of lives transformed by the gospel. And we promise to work with you for it, both reaping and sowing. Let there be harvest in our own lives and in the lives of those we know and love. We pray for those who are sick or troubled, for those who are lonely or who have suffered loss. We pray for ourselves, that whatever difficulties we face, our lives may be grateful and joyful. We pray for a harvest of deepened love, more faithful discipleship. And we promise to work with you for it, both reaping and sowing. We pray for Israel and Palestine after the atrocities of yesterday. May wisdom prevail. May there be some way to reconcile these nations and bring about peace. And in a time of silent prayer, we bring before you those that we know are in need of prayer this morning. These prayers we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so as we bring our harvest service to a close, we do so by singing from CH4231 for the fruits of his creation.
God of the harvest, send us out to sow. Support us as we tend and bless us as we reap all in your holy name. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore.